It's 11.45 p.m. on September 17th, 2017. It's pitch dark and I'm running as fast as my legs can carry me. So far on this day, I propelled myself 139 miles around the outskirts of Madison, Wisconsin as part of a full distance triathlon. The problem is I still have 1.6 miles left to go before the finish line and I'm not certain that I'm gonna make it in time. Most people have never heard of a full distance triathlon, usually referred to as an Ironman, which by the way, in my view, is as gender neutral a term as human is, but I digress. It consists of a 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike, followed by a 26.2 mile run. Each competitor has 17 hours to complete it with many strict time cutoffs throughout the day for each of the disciplines. If you miss a cutoff by so much as 10 seconds, you'll be pulled from the race and your day is over. And yes, that's all in one day. You might be thinking, that's ridiculous, and I don't blame you. You might also be wondering why I'm participating in an ultra endurance event, especially considering Janelle's kind introduction was entirely about hockey. At 11.45 p.m. on September 17th, I was wondering the same thing. I have to say it's quite improbable that I've found myself now thoroughly entwined in both marathon and long course triathlon racing. During my time here at Brooks, my athletic life primarily revolved around ice hockey. And like the majority of hockey players I know, I did not think that going out for a run was a fun activity. My cousin Kevin's here today, we are in the same class here at Brooks, and I'm sure that if you ask him, he will attest to the fact that if you happen to spot either of us out on a conditioning run for one of the sports we participated in, we ran the same way. Shoulders hunched upward, elbows flung out to the sides, and feet thundering loudly on the pavement. There was no gracefulness here while running. In college, a similar story played out. During our springtime conditioning sessions, I was routinely finishing at the back of the pack for any team running activity. One time I even got beat by one of the goalies. Coach never let me hear the end of that one. So really, what am I doing in Wisconsin? To answer that, I'd have to take you back to another date, December 31st, 2015. I'm standing in my familiar spot in the blue line. We're in Gillette Stadium, participating in the first ever NHL sponsored professional women's outdoor game as part of their annual Winter Classic festivities. It was a huge day for women's hockey. Just as the Bruins were, we too were facing off against our rivals from Montreal. Less than halfway through the game, I watched from the bench as my teammate Denna raced into the offensive zone to forecheck. And in the next instant, the unthinkable happened. She crashed headfirst into the boards. We learned after the game that she had sustained a severe spinal cord injury, fracturing her C5 and C6 vertebrae. Initially, we hoped for improvement as the swelling decreased, but with time it became obvious that she was going to have significant deficits. She had no sensation or movement below her chest and minimal movement of her hands and wrists. Over the next several years, I've watched my friend and teammate attack her daily rehab, enroll in clinical trials, and become deeply involved in multiple spinal cord injury foundations. Most astonishing of all, she's still smiling. There hasn't been a day that goes by that I haven't at some time or another thought back to that fateful moment. It could have just as easily been me sitting in that wheelchair. Suddenly the saying, you never know when your last game will be seemed a little bit too personal. Over the next year, I debated in my head what I could do to help not only spread awareness about spinal cord injuries, but also show my support of her tenacity and determination to make the most of her circumstances. And one day I made my decision. I'd try something crazy, something that made me very uncomfortable and didn't fit with any of my natural abilities. I signed up for the Wisconsin Ironman. My friend can no longer skate, run, ride a traditional bike, or even walk. But I had a perfectly healthy body that could do all of the, those things. I know that if today, Denna was able to trade places with an able-bodied person for one day, she wouldn't be sitting on the couch all day. 
She'd be skating, running, dancing, you name it, she'd probably be doing it all. So here I was with a perfectly able body, maybe by taking on a somewhat ridiculous goal that would put me far outside my normal comfort zone. I could not only see how far I could go, but hopefully inspire others to do the same. Throughout my athletic career, I've learned that the best leaders on a team lead with example by their effort. In fact, I'd argue that this is why fans fill arenas and stadiums. For those moments in sport where you see someone laying out for a catch or a ferocious back check to save a goal at the last second, or in the case of endurance racing, at mile 25 of a marathon, when, when exhaustion is written all over the racer's face and yet they're still moving forward. It stirs belief that maybe, just maybe, they can also put forth such extraordinary effort. So too is it that in pursuing your own big crazy goal and stepping outside your comfort zone, that others will see your striving and be inspired to do the same themselves. It's nice for me to say that I'm grateful for my good health and able body. It's more meaningful for me to take action and make use of those abilities. Now you may be sitting here today thinking to yourself that Ironman racing is completely unrelatable, and that's okay. This speech isn't about Ironman. For me, Ironman represented a big crazy goal that I wasn't quite certain I could achieve. It represented a way to display my gratefulness for my good health and able body, because after all, the best way to give thanks for a gift is to use it. And perhaps most of all, I hope that by putting myself out of my comfort zone to pursue a crazy goal, that someone else would be inspired to believe they could do the same. Today, I ask that you think about where you are now and set for yourself your own big crazy goal. It doesn't have to be endurance racing. Maybe you're hoping to make a varsity team, pursue college athletics, or master a specific skill. Maybe it has nothing to do with athletics at all. I work in a medical ICU. At the height of the first surge of the pandemic, one of my coworkers was suffering greatly from daily anxiety and stress associated with our extreme workload. She made the goal to spend 15 minutes each day for one month simply walking outside or doing some type of physical activity. No metrics, no mile goals, just 15 daily minutes. As the month went on and she intentionally made time for herself, her stress lessened. Her goal was just as important and meaningful as mine. So whatever it is, make it personal to you. This isn't about the person next to you or your best friend or me. Your goal will be different than mine and that's how it should be. Be unafraid to aim high. By definition, a big goal means you're likely to fall short a few times along the way. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and try again. It's 11.45 p.m. on September 17th, 2017. My eyes are fixed forward up the road, legs burning and brain screaming to stop this mad sprint to the finish. I have 15 minutes before the midnight cutoff and 1.6 miles left to go. Ordinarily, this would not be a problem, but after my legs have carried me 139 miles that day, it was a big problem. What is the point of this? No one will care if you don't make it. Stop. My brain screamed a continuous stream of arguments to slow down. I was forced to re-examine why I was even there in the first place. I thought of my friend who would give anything to feel that extreme exhaustion that comes only with a great total body effort. So I did the only thing my, brain, my tired brain could think of. I started chanting in my head, because I can. Next thing I knew, the lights of the finishing shoot were in sight, and I'm making it down the red carpet just before midnight. Set your big crazy goal. Be relentless in your striving to get there. Make yourself uncomfortable in the pursuit. Persevere when you fall short. And above else, bring others with you. This is what athletics and life is all about. Herb Brooks, the famed USA Olympic hockey coach, summed it up perfectly when he said, let me start with issuing you a challenge. Be better than you are. Set a goal that seems unattainable, and when you reach that goal, set another one even higher. Thank you.